Question, are you the kind of person who, when you find an expired can of food in your pantry, do you throw it away right away? Or do you kind of like open it up and like taste a little bit of the food and see if it still tastes good and then like eat it if it tastes okay? Hi, I am Stacy Summero, and this is Ascension Presents. So sometimes we have these deep, powerful paradigms, we'll call them, these principles that we live out of. For example, you're the kind of person who automatically throws away expired food, it probably comes from a deeper principle where you believe that your health is too precious to risk. Whereas if you are the kind of person who opens the food and like tastes a little bit, you would probably do that out of a principle that food should not be wasted. Sometimes the paradigms that we hold about ourselves are actually the most difficult to identify and change. When I was young, my paradigm was that your worth was equal to how you looked. And I remember the moment at which this paradigm started to develop. It was when I heard someone who I really loved and respected talking about themselves badly and comparing themselves to another person. And at that moment, what I subconsciously picked up was, this is how we talk to ourselves. And if we don't look the way that we want to look, or if we are not this size, then our worth is not equal to that person who is that size. And so we deserve to talk badly to ourselves. Now, as a Catholic Christian, I believe that we are made good. In the book of Genesis, you know, God saw all that he, was, that he made and he declared it good. And he, it also says in the book of Genesis that God made man in his image. We are the Imago Dei. I have three little Imago Stacys. <laughs> I have three children and they look like me. And similarly, we look like God in our souls. We are made in the image of truth, beauty, and love and goodness himself. But do we believe that? Do we believe that here or do we believe that here and here? I know for many years of my life, I believed it here, but I didn't believe it in my heart. And if you would ask me like, hey, Stacy, do you think that your worth is dependent on how you look? I would have been like, no, of course not, that's crazy. But I acted as though I believed that that were true. And I behaved as though I believed that were true. And so in my world, in my paradigms, for many years, it was. Now I started ballet when I was 14, which is a lot later than most people. And I worked really hard, but by that time I had already hit puberty. And so I wasn't shaped like most of the girls in my ballet class. And no matter how hard I work, no, no matter how much success I achieved, it didn't matter because I was always talking to myself and telling myself, you're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly, no one's ever going to love you. When I was a junior in college, these self-image issues turned into a full-blown eating disorder. My paradigms led me to behave in a way that was actually insane. Um, so I wanted to work with this theater company and this choreographer that I really, really admired and respected told me that I needed to lose as much weight as possible in two weeks um, in order to get cast in the shows. And so that outward validation of my inward false paradigms set me off on a crazy two-week just binge of two hours of exercise and eating nothing but apples and carrots and light and fit yogurt pretty much every day. Don't ever do that to yourself. What I should have done was to look for, to God for my validation of who I am, but instead I was looking to this other person who was affirming these false paradigms. I came back to the, those training sessions for that theater company 14 pounds later in two weeks, and I would never recommend that you ever do that to yourself. That was a pound a day that I lost, and the scale kept going down and down and down until I looked like a skeleton walking around. And that choreographer gave me a lot of affirmation and she was she cast me in the shows and I finally had this body that I wanted and so I finally started talking better to myself, but there was a high price tag because the minute I gained an ounce, all progress slid backwards. My, my whole world was the scale. My whole God was the scale and the scale dictated to me if I was allowed to have a good day. And the instant that I gained an ounce or two, I would tell myself again, you're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly, and no one is ever going to love you. And I realized over time that the price tag of that body that I had wanted for so long was my health, my relationships, my relationship with God, any of my hobbies and activities, they were all subject to my punishing two hour daily workouts. So maybe this is you, if you're in this place where either you have an eating disorder or you're just talking badly to yourself, Ask yourself, what are my paradigms? What do I actually believe about myself? And I know in this world, it is so easy to get caught up in wanting to look like someone else. We are assaulted with images constantly on social media and our screens, everything. 
So ask yourself, what are my paradigms and who am I looking to? Am I looking to God to actually tell me how he sees me? Now, I have so much I could share about my healing process, but I do wanna share one story that happened to me earlier this year that helped me to understand the love of a parent, the God who created us, more than probably anything else in my life. When I was uh, seven months pregnant with my daughter, Honora, I woke up in the middle of the night in January of this past year, eight months ago, and I was having a placental abruption, which basically means I was hemorrhaging. And we rushed to the hospital and my daughter was born via emergency C-section. And when I say that she was close to dead, what I mean is that it took 22 minutes of CPR to bring her heart rate back. She had probably 10 blood transfusions. She was having seizures. Every organ in her body was a concern. She received a, um, a permanent disability because of her brain injury from the lack of oxygen from the loss of blood. I mean, my poor little baby was so sick. And then on day six of her life, her intestines were so weakened that they got a hole in them and she went septic. And her little belly was so swollen and green. And the doctors called us in and they told us this might be goodbye for our daughter. I looked at my little daughter and she was tiny. She weighed less than four pounds. She was covered with uh, tubes and wires. You could barely even see her underneath all of them. And um, how many times have you felt so weak and so small and so inconsequential? How many times have you needed a parent to come for you who will love you? And I'll tell you, when I looked at my daughter lying there, all I could feel for her was overwhelming love. And all I could see was how beautiful she was to me. And I, I took her little tiny hand in one of my fingers and I said, sweetheart, if you can keep breathing, if you can make it through this, your daddy and I can't wait to take you home and just give you everything. That is how a parent loves. <laughs> she wasn't a very productive member of society at that point, you could say. <laughs> but that didn't matter. I wasn't judging her based on what she could do or how she looked or anything about her. All I could see was how much I loved her. And in the following 126 days, uh, my daughter had a rough time. She had four surgeries, countless medical procedures. Every day was so hard and she was in the NICU. But throughout those 126 days, my husband and I went to see her every day. We left our home so that we could be closer to her. I was going through just a very difficult recovery from my emergency C-section, but I didn't count the cost of any of these things because I loved her so much. And if you had asked me if I would have traded my life for anybody else's, I would have said no, because I couldn't imagine a life where she didn't exist. I loved her so much. That is how a parent loves. And if I, an imperfect parent, can love my daughter that way, how much more can a perfect parent love you? When God looks at you, he's not seeing the flaws, he's not seeing the sins, he's not seeing all of the imperfections that you see when you look in the mirror. God is looking at you with so much love and only a desire to come for you, to pick you up, to hold you, to love your heart as it needs to be loved, which is endlessly and eternally. So. Turn to God, turn to sacred scripture, see what he has to say about you. In Song of Songs chapter four, verse nine, it says, you have stolen my heart, my sister, my bride, with one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. I love that verse so much. Isaiah 62, four says, for the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. That might actually be verse five. <laughs> but in any case, beautiful words from your creator to you, the one who knows you best. You are not bad. You were created good. So what are your paradigms and who are you looking to for your validation? From all of us here at Ascension Presents, God bless.